So as most of you are probably aware by now, the uh, cryptocurrency mining market sort of wrecked the gaming market in terms of uh, GPU prices. Even on the Nvidia side of things, we've seen price fluctuations uh, very common in the mid-range cards, especially the GTX 1060 and even the uh, 1070 were hit pretty hard by the cryptocurrency mining and a lot of those cards were either completely out of stock or ridiculously expensive because Nvidia's architecture actually this time around has been fairly efficient at mining cryptocurrency, especially when AMD's cards are going off at way above market value. So even Nvidia wasn't exempt. Now fortunately we're starting to get to a point where uh, graphics card prices are starting to come back down to about the point that they should be. Um, in a lot of cases the 1060 is down in price, the 1070 is getting back where it needs to be. The 1080 was never really affected that much, which is sort of an interesting anomaly there. But the 1080 Ti actually kind of was, so that was sort of of a interesting dynamic going on there. So today I want to do a quick roundup of all the uh, sort of mid-range to top tier graphics cards on both the AMD and Nvidia side and sort of give you a rundown of just where we stand right now with graphics card pricing and availability. So let's go ahead and hop over to the computer. And of course, before we get started here, I want to point out that these are not the only options that I found available. These just happen to be some of the most price effective options that I felt like had decent cooling on board as well. So you should be able to get more or less the most out of each of these chips as we look along at these different solutions. So I want to get started on the Nvidia side of things because the GTX 1050 Ti here has largely been unaffected by cryptocurrency mining. It may have seen a slight bump in price as gamers uh, that were seeking out 1060s couldn't afford those, so they may have dropped down to a 1050 Ti, and that may have helped uh, sort of boost prices a little bit for this particular card. But for the most part, you can find these in the $150 range. This particular one is one of the cheaper options I found at exactly $150 from a Gigabyte. However, um, this cooling solution, it's okay, but uh, I would honestly recommend, considering some of the other variants of Gigabyte's cards haven't fared so well, you may want to spend the extra 5 or $10 to get something else like an EVGA 1050 Ti. For example, this one, which may have just a little bit better cooling. Um, this would be one of those cases you just need to uh, look into the uh, reviews online, see how cooling is, and then really pick whatever one you prefer. Moving over to the GTX 1060s, these were cards that were extremely expensive not that long ago. In fact, a month ago, uh, these prices were much higher. Now, the prices are coming back down a lot. So this particular one is, uh, I believe, the cheapest 1060 that I found, which is a three gigabyte variant, which is readily available on Amazon. Now, originally the MSRP pricing for this card, the three gigabyte version, was $199 at $217.89. It's getting pretty close back to where it should be, at least on the pricing scale. And considering that it's, a, of course, a third party design cooler here, that may also drive up pricing just a little bit. But of course, the cards that were hit hardest in the 1060 range were the six gigabyte variants, which at one point were going off for, you know, around that $400 range for a 1060. Now the prices are back under the $300 mark. We have a 1060 uh, here with the six gigabytes of memory on board at $270. And the 1060 with six gigabytes originally had an MSRP pricing of $250. So again, with that third party cooling solution, it may drive up the cost just a little bit, but we are back in that price range that I like seeing the GTX 1060s in. It really opens up the market for the mid-range gamer which I think is a very popular market to begin with and this card fits right in there once again now that pricing is back down in an affordable range. Yet another card that was heavily hit by mining on the Nvidia side was also the 1070s which at one point were going off at like five or six hundred dollars with original MSRP pricing of three hundred and eighty dollars for a reference cooler design. Now again obviously 
those third party coolers do drive up the cost here and this one is particularly available at $413.99 from Zotac this is the cheapest one that I was available uh, or at least that I found on Amazon readily available right now of course there's not very many left in stock so 1070s may still have a little bit of availability issues going on there however the pricing is back about where it needs to be and they are available you just have to find them and uh, like I said this one has some available there are still other variants available of the 1070 not just the Zotac version it's just the other ones are a little bit more expensive however it's not like this is the only affordable one out on the market right now now the GTX 1080 has been a little bit of an anomaly in the graphics card market in that we've actually seen the price go down from its MSRP price of just under $600 at 599 this particular version is readily available uh, on Amazon right now for $548 89 cents there are some versions out there that are cheaper than it that I want to go over as well specifically this uh, EVGA GTX 1080 is available but it takes a couple of weeks to ship so if you have a little bit of time maybe you're a maybe you're just sort of parting your system together now and you still haven't purchased your other components it might be a good option because this one is cheaper and also looks to have a very solid cooling solution on board as EVGA is sort of known for their uh, cooling solutions being not just elegant but also a effective. On the other hand, you can go even cheaper for an MSI gaming uh, GTX 1080 with this is the Armor Edition. Now, I've seen some very negative reviews with the Armor Editions of MSI's cards. Uh, they're basically just saying the cooling solution isn't that good at all. So I would say buyer beware on this one. Maybe the cooling won't be so great. Or maybe they made tweaks to it and have improved the cooling. But if you're willing to take a little bit of a risk and want to save as much money as possible, the uh, GTX 1080 from MSI. MSI may be a good option for you. And then of course there's the GTX 1080 Ti's which although being good for mining have not really ever seen a gigantic jump in pricing and availability. Uh, this was one of the cheaper ones I could find the GTX uh, 1080 Ti Amp Edition from Zotac going off at $740 compared to the $700 price tag that Nvidia suggested in the MSRP. So again hasn't really seen a huge jump in the 1080 Ti market and uh, they are definitely readily available as well as other variants which are in this price range. And now we head over to the AMD side of things, which to be frank are still outrageous kind of across the board. Um, starting off with the RX 560, this particular one, um, although it only has one star, keep in mind that's only one uh, customer review. So uh, bear that in mind with this particular card, which is $110. It's actually a good entry level graphics card uh, for somebody that's building a very budget gaming PC. Maybe you're pairing it with like um, an older Athlon or even one of the new Athlons, uh, which I just talked about recently this wouldn't be a bad card to pair with it to get you up and running with some games at uh, lower uh, resolutions and uh, also lower graphic settings but $110 is a $10 markup on the uh, MSRP of $99 but the RX 560 has largely been unaffected by uh, mining in general moving on to the RX 570 is a ridiculous markup at $370 right now on Amazon this is one of the few that's available even and that's over the $170 which is suggested by AMD as the MSRP so obviously the mining market is still crazy driving up AMD graphics cards and the RX 570 is still being strongly affected as we move over to the 580s you'll see a very similar story this particular one is not really available because I couldn't really find any RX 580s that just weren't affected at all all moving over to the 8 gigabyte version this one is available at $360 unlike the 570 which is more expensive on Amazon right now but the 580 does not come with any of the uh, mining add-ons that are bundled with the 570 that is available that being said $360 is still a huge markup once again over the MSRP of $230 for an 8 gigabyte RX 580 the Vega series of cards aren't really faring any better either uh, the RX Vega 56 is virtually unavailable everywhere however if you are able to find them uh, this particular one is not being sold through Amazon it is a third party that's selling this card and of course the markup is clear there at $681 which is way over the MSRP of $400 and the RX Vega 64 is no different here going off at $700 with an MSRP of just $500 and that's if you can find them available and of course if you can 
cannot find the Vega 64 in stock at Amazon, then you can always pop over to Newegg where there are several in stock. However, again, the markup is putting them at near $700 over that MSRP again of just $500. So AMD cards are still not only scarce, but extremely overpriced if you are a gamer. So if you are somebody that's about ready to buy a new graphics card, hopefully this video was informative to you. Let me know in the comments down below if you're gonna buy and if you are, what card are you gonna be looking to buy? Let me know down below. And if you like this video, give me a like down below, uh, share, subscribe, comment, all those things are very helpful to the channel. You can follow me on Instagram and on Twitter at Hoosier Hardware. Those are both great places to get in contact with me if you would like to. And as always, we'll let YouTube queue up a couple more videos from my channel for you to watch. I'm Shane with Hoosier Hardware, and I'll see you guys in the next video.